Hey everybody, Big Z. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, haven't put any videos up. I guess as most of you know, uh, was locked out of my channel at YouTube, then banned, shadow banned, all my subs taken away. I think the last clipping, they took 500 out in one day. I think there's one sub left, one video left, and I'm locked out and I can't even respond to comments or anything. And first of all, I want to say to the folks that, especially the men that have left comments, uh, I have logged back in under another name and left uh, some comments. So I will let you know um, if you're watching this, you're getting the link to the new channel that I'm setting up. And I think I'm going to go across the board and put a, a mirror channel on BitChute and Rumble as well. Because uh, I know this probably won't last there. And then the content I'm going to put up this time is really going to be heavy. So anyway, I'll try to leave links and so forth in the videos. Um, I'm doing this video for a couple of reasons. One, it's directed towards the, tar the targeted individual, individual community and those that are victim of SRA or what I call MRA, Masonic Ritual Abuse. Um, it's, I don't want to do this and I don't want to say this, but it's something that we've got to talk about. Um, part of the healing process in this for us is to communicate with one another um, and that helps us heal it gives us strength together, the knowing there's other people that have gone through the same things that we have. It's important for us to communicate amongst each other, but be very careful in who these channels are and who is hosting these and so forth. They're trying to, and let me just say this, I'm gonna back up a moment and um, explain it this way. Those those were involved in the truth movement were involved in the flat earth movement for quite a long time and it grew super fast and one of the channels that came up was one called flat earth and other hot potatoes and it was hosted by a girl named patricia steer and those of us almost everybody in the fe community went into there because they were doing weekly interviews and we felt it was just a great it was a great platform in community the problem with it was, is it was controlled opposition. And it was sad because I liked Pat, I liked Patricia. I thought she was attractive and very nice. It was always very friendly and nice to me. And I never ever said anything about her, but we just, we discovered it was controlled op. Um, I kind of broke it on it when I, as a builder, I discovered a couple things. When they were shooting the videos from her location, it was supposed to be in her apartment and some things didn't look right in there. It was, you could tell it was staged. And there was a doorway that was leading, um, looked like an, an egress door, like a pathway door for a bedroom or something, except this door frame was a commercial door frame. And it was a fire rated door with a commercial handle on it. And as a builder, I know those doors are only used for entrance and egress uh, and uh, to the outside. And it's in a commercial building. And there were some other things that tipped us off, some lighting and so forth. Well, one day she said to me, you know, um, tell Mark Sargent, who was the other host of the show, um, I left something on his desk for him. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. How'd you do that? Mark is in Seattle and you're in Nevada. And like, what? Anyway, long story short, we put the pieces together and figured out that there were people in other cities, but th that they were hosting but they were in one studio in Nevada. And Nevada's a hotbed for this stuff. And so there were three separate uh, channels uh, operating under one roof. And we caught them. Another thing is anything that has to do with Freemasonry, nothing is superlative and everything has dual meaning. And her name being Patricia Steer, and Steer means a castrated bull. And as we found out, she was male to female <laughs> and steer means to steer people. So there's a dual meaning in her name. And we found out the other hosts, same thing. And we were all being brought in. And at once, that, once they were able to get everybody in this massive community together, they started imploding it and discrediting it. And it was classic. We've all learned our lessons. We've all been duped like myself who worked with InfoWars all those years, you know, uh, it was sad to realize that AJ was, you know, who he is. And then again, nothing superlative. Alex Jones is 33 in Pythagorean numerology. Info worlds, prison planet, all 33 names. So you've got to do your research and know who it is that's hosting. Because I'm telling you what's going on, the danger in this right now. 
Um, they're cataloging us. They're drawing us out, the SRAs that are out there, and they're trying to figure out how much we're remembering, what we've gone through, and some of the people that are interviewing some of the people are very good at drawing this information out so that they can, one, catalog us, and they'll do the same thing they've always done, bring us all together in a community, have us communicating with each other, and they corral us. And so it's just us in a big echo chamber. And then they'll implode it, and they'll bring agents in posing, because I've never seen more agents in anything than I have this TI stuff. And they're gonna bring all these people in who we think are other TIs that they're not, and they're gonna just credit the whole thing. This is how they roll, it's part of their deal. So let's be very careful in what we're doing uh, and be smart. And I will interject this now. Most of you who know me know that one of the things I do, I'm a martial art instructor. I've been teaching Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for, I guess, what, 17 years now, 16 years. But I've been teaching since I was 18 years old, different stuff. I was a big uh, Muay Thai fighter for a long time. And anyway, long story short is, um, I brought a girl in this morning, actually the family from Maryland sent this girl in here to train with me um, to get her certified to teach a course. She's 18 years old, oh, unbelievably cute. Acts like she's 30, carries herself like she's 30, five foot tall, 93 pounds, and a little badass. Three hours of training this morning, I think she whooped my rear end. But she's tough, and I'll tell men out there, you put your hands on her, this little girl, you're going to regret it. And it reminded me of something that I want to share, especially with the women out there who are victims, who are TIs and the victims of SRA and MRA. There was, um, there was a, um, a, a clan or, or a people back in the Bronze Age, and they were, I guess, near the Black Sea, they were called the Scythians. And the Scythian women were freaking amazing. Little girls all had their long hair. At birth, the mothers would cauterize their right breast and you think, why in the world would you do something like that? It's so the breasts wouldn't develop. And the reason why they did this is as they grew up, they became archers. And when they pulled that archer back and they held it against their chest, there was nothing bouncing. And so they cauterized the right breast off. These little girls were trained, uh, were giving snake venoms at young age, little tiny amount of snake venom. And they did it so that they would build up resistance to it. By the time they were 12, 13 years old, they could handle getting bit by snakes. Why is that important? Because they would take their hair and dip their hair in snake venom. And when they would pull that arrow out, they'd run it through their hair and pull back. The Greeks were scared shitless of these girls. They'd ride those horseback backwards and they were deadly accurate. And if that arrow just cut your skin, you were done. Scythian girls, I'll tell you how badass they were. When they became of age to have a man, and they were very young, I think 15 or something, maybe even younger than that, and they wanted to have a man to be married, they had to have at least three kills. They had to have killed three men before they were allowed to take a man. And after they took the man, if they didn't like him or he didn't live up, ditch his ass and get another one. And it's, <laughs> it's amazing how things have changed, how tough women can be, a lot tougher than us men. There was another tribe that were there, um, I think it was near the Black Sea, that this one particular tribe loved their women. In fact, they valued them so much. And let's just say the child trafficking and human trafficking was probably worse in the Bronze Age than it is now. Maybe equal, and that's really bad. We're back to where we were. But when they would capture their women, the, this group, this tribe, valued their women so much that they would trade three to four men to get one of their women back because they knew the value of them and they had love and respect for their women. Something that we don't have anymore in our society. I heard a statistic the other day. One in five boys are now molested by the age of 15 and half of all girls by the time of 18 have been molested by their father slash stepdad, father figure or pastor minister. I'll say this as a man and a father who raised a stepdaughter who I got when she was five years old. Love of my life, just the greatest blessing I've ever had. The thought of ever doing something to my daughter 
it doesn't enter it doesn't even enter a man's mind so why does it enter into these men's minds and i'll tell you ladies why and it's important for you to know because i haven't i you're my heroes you, the, all you out there that have been survived this you're my heroes you really are including my wife who i'm estranged from for over a year who's also a victim there are two types of men in this world they're what we call patriarchal men and there are matriarchal men patriarchal men desire brotherhoods and, and they desire to be uh, admired by other men and they want fame they want money and they want these things a matriarchal man is something different a patriarchal man worships a man a man god the bearded man god in the sky the matriarchal man worships our mother father in heaven and know that all life comes from our mother and our mothers and our role as men are to protect honor cherish our mothers our wives and our daughters and to raise our boys to do the same. And we know and understand that we are put in control only because they allow us to be. That's our role and not to forget that. These other types of men think that they have the right to treat women as property and do with them as they choose. And those are your men of the secret societies, the brotherhoods, and they're the ones out here doing what they're doing. The matriarchal men have a tough, tough, tough life that we live. We are hated by these men. And when we stand up, we take a lot of shit for it. I mean, what they've done to me is, I won't get into it, but I'm just, I, I'm not, the reason why I'm shooting this video this morning is to, to say this, be careful what we're doing out here. Don't give yourself away. Am I, all my years of martial arts training, one of the things we learned is we learned first all the shit that didn't work, all the karate and all the taekwondo and all the all the crap that we learned. We learned what didn't work, and we finally learned the one that did work. I'll say this: in this fight that we're in, we're not fighting back. We're just telling our story and reliving it. Some people have become professional victims out of this. There's never a remedy or a solution ever given to combat this and to beat it and to get out ahead of it. When you learn to fight like we do in jujitsu, the really good guys are the ones that will not only, they bait you that we will set bait and traps for you to fall into. And there are always three or four moves out ahead of you. And we have got to get to that point. We've got to learn strategy. First of all, you don't even know who your enemy is. Some of you are out there who are, are naming our enemy as these fictitious characters called Satan or the devil or Lucifer or whatever it is. And you need to stop doing that. Our enemy, of course, it says that we wrestle not. That's exactly what it says. We wrestle not. We don't wrestle. We don't even wrestle these people against flesh and blood. We do wrestle against flesh and blood. And quit giving this away as some spirit out there floating around the sky. These are bad people. We need to go after these people. And one of the things that we're taught in all the religions that we're in is this thing called forgiveness. And you're going to get mad at me and I'm going to tell you. But that is there on purpose. That is a written in defense that was written in by the enemy. Forgiveness is something you do internal. You can forgive them internally. You don't forgive them externally. They don't get away with this. None of them do. They don't get forgiveness. They have to ask for forgiveness and they have to face justice. And if we still live in this pacifist, religion that we have been suckered into that we just forgive everybody for everything nothing is going to happen that was designed that way in fact if you want to know who designed it the Flavians wrote that into the bible it was Titus Flavius and that crew that decided to you know, I won't get into it our enemy are living breathing people 
may have bad spirits in them, but we're fighting against people and they cannot get away any longer with this. We got to start calling them out by name, who they are, and we got to understand how it is that we go after them. No one's fighting back. We're just reliving our tragedy. And that's okay as a first step in healing, but it's never gonna get anywhere. And they're just gonna continue to do what they're doing. They've given us weapons that don't work. They've given us an external savior. Your savior is inside of you, he's not external. Quit giving away agency, power, and authority to an entity that is outside of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're giving away agency to something else. Their modus operandus is the Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution. Everybody knows this. They create the problem, they wait for you to react to it, and they show up as a solution. An entity poses as the creator of all, He's really the God of this world. He's a created being. He poses as God of this world. He creates the problem. I owe you, I need salvation. I need this and that. I come to the bottom. I've, I blah, blah, blah. He fills a world full of temptation. So you need a savior. And he shows up as the savior. You give agency to that entity. All you've done is surrendered back to the same entity that caused you to get here. Brilliant. It is a brilliant strategy that every one of us have fallen into. We will never beat this enemy when you're worshiping him at the same time. Christ lives inside of you, not outside of you. The creator that you're praying to is not the creator of all. He's the God of this world. And as long as you continue to do that, we will never even put a dent in this thing. My videos are going to come out. Um, I'm shooting them now. I'm going to do a series on how to fight back. First, how to identify the enemy, how to identify who you are. Strategies for doing it. Weapons that actually work, not these ones they give us that are completely worthless. Who our creator really is. And a game plan to finally win this fight. Be careful out here um, to everyone, to these, so many of the women out there, the Kathy O'Briens that are out there and uh, Laura Worley and some of the others that I've spoken to. Um, so many of you, Brooke, uh, I listened to your interview yesterday. Uh, uh, you know, I've listened to a lot of yours. Amazing, you're amazing women. You're tough, you're strong. I honestly believe that y'all, I kind of honestly believe that y'all volunteered for this. It's like you saw this happening in this realm and you volunteered to incarnate here to allow yourself to go through this horror, to set a trap, to be used as bait, to set a trap to catch these entities. And I think it's amazing what you've done. Um, like I said, you're my heroes. But it's now time to step out of where we are as being victims of this thing and move into the position of fighting back and defeating them. And we need to shift into that. As a builder, one of the things I do, I build and I repair, we remodel homes that have been damaged. And whenever I do work for a client, I never present a problem without presenting a solution or a remedy. The same thing with this. If we're going to present what's happened to us, then we need to also present a remedy and a game plan to fight this thing back and win it and defeat them. It's not hard for us to do. They literally are scared shitless of us. They know what they can do to us and what they can't do to us. They use fear as their tactic. And yes, as a TI, they do horrible shit to us. Last five days, I've been hit, last three days, I've been hit harder than I've probably ever been hit in this because we're bringing forth solutions and they are scared shitless of it. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this short. 
I've got series coming out that we're shooting right now of game plans, how to win this war, and we're going to. And this shit's going to stop. Half of young girls being raped by their daddies now, this shit is going to stop. I've had enough of it. I watched a video yesterday of a young girl attempted a kidnapping in France. I'll see if I can put it in the next video. He doesn't get away with a little girl, but it is horrifying to watch. Human trafficking is, it's, it's a worldwide epidemic and we have to stop it. Anyway, I love everybody. Um, I'll let you know the channel name as it comes out. It'll be, you know, put into this one. And because it'll be the same, I'm going to try to pick a name the same across all the platforms so it's easy to remember. Anyway, I love everybody. Hope to talk to everybody soon. Have an awesome day. I'm out.